could start with where we are. Sure. Here we are at George Washington's tomb, where George and Martha Washington uh, were uh, placed in burial. Uh, really, a second time, they were first put in a, in a small family plot right down on the water, and then they were removed and brought over here uh, to this uh, famous burial place. It is interesting, though, that the American people didn't want this, the, especially the Congress. They built the Congress of the United States and the Rotunda around a burial place for George Washington. That's how much he was loved. They wanted him entombed under the Rotunda in the great new Congress of the United States. And they have that, even to this day, his tomb spot is still there under the Rotunda, and they've kept it for him, although he'll never come. Because George was, believe it or not, a humble man. He did not, he was a farmer. He wanted to be buried on his farm. And he, unlike Napoleon, unlike George III, those great tyrants of their time, uh, he resigned his commission in 1783 after he had won the American Revolution and was so acclaimed in his country, he could have declared himself president for life or king and the people would have gone along with it. But instead, he turned down uh, that opportunity and went back to his farm and uh, until he was called up to be president of the United States. But here he is very simply uh, entombed with scripture verses uh, right next to his tomb. Uh, but it's important to look at him as just a man, but a man under God who fulfilled a very important purpose. From early in his life, he knew that he was providentially called for some special purpose. He said in the French and Indian War, when he was saved, he writes to his brother, I had, I had two horses shot out from under me and four bullets through my coat and I was providentially saved. He knew at that point, ah, God's got, my, God's got my back. There's some reason why I'm still alive. And so throughout the rest of his life and in the American Revolution, he fought with bravery and he fought, you know, and, and people would, would aim their, their rifles at them and, and nothing hit him. He was, not, he was not shot at all during the war. But he comes back and he ends up leading the country into the first greatest constitutional republic that the world has, has ever known and then he simply retires to his beloved farm. That's what he wanted to be all his life as a farmer and a family man. It is interesting, one final point, that George never had children. And you think, why is it? He loved his wife, Martha, dearly. Uh, she did have children before they were married that he helped raise and then grandchildren that he raised here at Mount Vernon, but he never had children of his own. And could that not be a providential event? Because he was so loved that at his death, there was a three year mourning period and all of the cities were draped in black for three years. But if George Washington had children, especially boys, those boys would have grown up and people would have wanted to make them kings because they would have wanted to, to develop the royalty structure or the caste structure, which had dominated Europe and dominated the world for 6,000 years. But George Washington would have nothing to do with that. And because uh, he just had no uh, family to go on directly, I think it was a good thing because it wasn't a temptation for the people to go and worship the lineage rather than worship the God who saved this man. He was a great man, George Washington, the indispensable man for the founding of this great republic.